Today we're going to talk about the evolution of development. So we talked about development in the past and this is the process of how the single cell, which is the cycle, the cell that results from the egg being fertilized by the sperm, develops and starts dividing and each of those cells that divide from there slowly become more and more specialized. And this happens by a very delicate process of controlling gene expression in deciding which genes are activated at what particular point in time in which particular place in the embryo. So that is the general process of development. And here we're going to see how changes in those genes and where they are expressed and when they are expressed can result in big changes for the organism that results, but also can lead to the formation of new species. So for this chapter, we're going to talk about how the same gene can produce different morphologies and how the small number of mutations can give rise to a different morphological type, how a gene can gain a new function, and how we can use those changes in developmental pathways to s compare whether a structure is homologous or homoplastic. And we can also use this information to understand whether two traits uh, have the same evolutionary development, the same evolutionary origin, or they come from different origins. So let's start with how can the same gene produce different morphologies? And we have two main mechanisms. So we have changes in the timing of gene expression which is at what point in time those genes are activated and changes in the spatial pattern of gene expression. So let's look at the first case, which is called heterochrony. This means a change in the timing of the expression. So for example, in this, in, in this species of sea urchin, we have Similar uh, patterns of meiosis, but producing the egg and the sperm. So this is how gametes are always produced. And then those gametes fertilize and result in the production, in this case, of a larval stage that then metamorphosizes into a juvenile and continues its development into adulthood. But on this other hand, we have in direct development, we are skipping the step. There is no algal here. We have direct development instead. So from the from fertilization, the formation of the zygote, we go straight into the growth as a juvenile and then as an adult. So there is no algal, no um, larva form here, and just losing the genes that control the development of the uh, of the larval state results in this urchin being a different species. Another change that can happen is a difference in the place or the spatial location where the genes are activated. This is a, an example of a mutation in Drosophila in which Dros Drosophila usually just have a single pair of wings. So this segment here will have just one set of wings. But in this individual, the gene that controls the development of that segment express itself again in this following segment. So this fruit fly has as a result two pairs of wings when it should have just one. So a change in the location where the gene is activated resulted in this fruit fly having two wing segments. We talked about how changes in the location or the timing of the expression of certain developmental genes can result in different morphologies. But now we're going to analyze the same question from the mechanism that is causing those changes. So what is the molecular mechanism behind the changes in gene expression? One possible change is that there are different transcription factors or the transcription factors can no longer bind or bind to, can no longer bind to the usual promoters or now bind to new promoters. Another possibility is the loss of function. So the, the gene doesn't work anymore, the gene that was supposed to be activated. It can also be that the same gene now has a new function, and now it's activating a different developmental pathway. 
And it could also be that genes duplicate, as it happens through evolutionary time, and those duplicates are now available to acquire new functions. So we're, we're going to talk about the first mechanism we mentioned about how transcription factors can change the place and the timing of activation of developmental genes. So here we have a gene region where we have regulatory regions where transcription factors combine. And so any of these places, and this is a transcription factor that normally will bind to one specific gene. So let's say here, in this case of this gene X, this transcription factor commonly activates that the expression of that gene and results in transcription and translation of the protein coded by that gene. But that transcription factor can acquire a new function and now can bind to this gene Y. So it can bind to the regulatory region of this new gene, possibly mediated by some new protein, like it's depicted here, and still result in the activation of gene expression, so the transcription and translation of the protein coded by that gene. An example of a transcription factor that has evolved to activate new genes, we can see it in the genes that regulate limb development. So we see the ancestor of all tetrapods had all these five genes that regulate limb, the expression of, or genes that regulate the development of the limb, and one of those genes is controlled by the TBX transcription factor. So this one we have in purple. But if we look at um, humans and birds, we descended from that ancestral tetrapod, they also have similar genes that control the development of their limbs, but it's a different set of genes that are activated by the TBX5 uh, transcription factor. And this can explain the difference in the morphology of these two limbs, so the human arm and the bird wing. Even though they have the same bones, the relative length of each of those bones and the specific shape is different, and that in part is regulated because of the, the different genes or the different transcription factors that are activating the same genes. So the same genes are expressed but at different times and at different locations. Another way in which genes, developmental genes, can influence changes in morphology is when you have the loss of a gene. So in the case of this cabbage family that we have here, there was a mutation that occurred in the ancestral of cauliflower and broccoli, and that caused a stop codon in the gene that regulates the length of um, the growth of the stems. So as a result, we have cauliflowers and broccoli that have very tightly packed flowers uh, produced in the same area. So this, they don't stop producing flowers and they keep making them in a very short distance from each other. So this is an example of how small mutation, mutation just a stop codon, can result in a big change in morphology. A similar example is found in stickleback fish. These are tiny fish that live in fresh water but are also in marine environments. And they are the same species, but the one in marine environments have, has a very uh, thick bony armor, and this helps it protect from predation. But in fresh water, it turns out that armor is not helpful, and instead, it makes the fish more vulnerable for predation. So the predators in fresh water are more likely to hold on to that bony armor. And as a result, fish in the sticklebacks that live in freshwater have lost that bony armor. And that is just the result of one mutation in one gene that causes this developmental change. Another way in which genes can affect development, can result in different developmental morphologies, is when they get a new function. And in this nature, it's very efficient in keeping the same genes but using them for these different functions as the organisms are evolving. So for example, in C. elegans, which is a nematode, a worm, we have this Bracuri protein that's coded by the Bracuri gene, and it's, it's uh, expressed in the inside of the intestine. So if you look at this, is a transverse cut of a worm, and these shade areas here in blue, 
these are the areas where this Bracuri gene is being expressed. So it is expressed in the gut of this worm. On the other hand, if you look at a more advanced organism in a certain way, this is a tunicate, which are uh, chordates closely rela related to us, or one of the closest invertebrates related to us, vertebrates. This tunicate has also the expression of the Bracuri gene, but now it's in a different location. Now, instead of being in expressed in the gut, it's expressed in the notochord. The notochord is the ancestral vertebrate or the, the, um, the a structure that preceded the, um, the vertebral column. So here we have an example of a gene that the gene hasn't changed, but the location where that gene is expressed has changed, as well as the function of that gene. And lastly, the last mechanism we're going to cover today is the possibility of the gene duplicating and now the, those duplicated genes acquiring new function. This, for instance, happened during flower development. So here we have the origin of flowering plants. And in those plants, the genes that regulate flower form duplicated. And here we have this event of uh, duplication of the AP3 gene. And as a result, the flowers that have that duplication have additional petal rings. So we have the ancestral flower with just a few layers in its flower, a few layers of petals, and then they have new rings of petals forming in this um, plants that have duplicated that gene. So this example shows us how the duplication of a gene can result in the increased complexity or the appearance of new morphologies.